when someone you love dies, there are no words that can make it better. Of course, there are platitudes that we may and perhaps even should say to the grieving widow, friend or parent, but at the end of the day, all those words do not make that painful absence any easier. The Gospel of John is the latest and most theological of the four canonical Gospels we find in our Bibles. And most biblical scholars today will tell you that it was almost certainly not written by St. John himself, but rather by one of his students or followers, who did not desire to create an accurate historical account of the events, but rather to provide us with a theological treatise on the purpose and meaning of Jesus' life, death, and the resurrection. That is why all the stories in St. John's Gospel contain long monologues or speeches by Jesus, who sort of narrates and explains his own actions, like an actor turning to the camera and addressing directly the audience. Today's passage is a great example of such theologizing Jesus that is quite unique to John's Gospel. We hear several speeches that Jesus gives to his disciples, to Lazarus' grieving sister, and even to God. Speeches that attempt to explain the meaning of illness, death, and life in a way that sounds, let's be honest, very alien and alienating to our modern ears, used to very short and catchy TikTok or Facebook videos. But by all means, all graduate-level theology students should study those great monologues, preferably in the original Greek. Forgive me, though, that for the sake of this five-minute sermon, I shall focus on Jesus' actions in this Gospel passage. After all, actions tend to speak louder than words, and certainly are remembered much longer than profound speeches. First of all, Jesus showed up. A bit late, but late is better than never. Being there is the first and the most important thing we can do for someone who is in emotional, physical, or spiritual pain. Showing up with a bottle of wine a homemade casserole will have much bigger impact than delivering a long-winded speech on the meaning of pain or death. The fact that you came, held their hand, and just listened will make a lasting impression on the soul of your friend. Second, Jesus wept. Even though he was the Messiah himself, who in the fourth gospel is very much mindful of his divine mission, Jesus wept in public. Our English word empathy comes from two Greek words. Pathos, meaning to feel, and M, meaning at or with. 
and translated literally, empathy means to feel with. Empathy, my friend, is the second pillar of today's gospel, but also of our Christian vocation. To feel with our suffering neighbors, to walk in the shoes of our marginalized siblings, to weep with those who are weeping and to rejoice with those who are rejoicing is at the heart of what it means to be Christian, but also, and perhaps even more importantly, of what it means to be a decent human being. Jesus showed up and he wept. His presence and his empathy made all the difference. Go and do likewise. Amen. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoy my weekly five-minute sermons. Please click on the like symbol below and make sure that you subscribe to this channel. If you can afford to make a donation of any amount, you may do so by clicking on the PayPal link, which can be found in the description of this video. Thank you and God bless.